thank you, Deputy Speaker, and what a note to begin speaking on. Um, I note that the uh, opposition come into this place suggesting that this government hasn't um, done anything on energy and have some quite unique and novel um, solutions for us. I did know, indeed, that the member for Fairfax was a big proponent for nuclear energy. I must say I had not realised that the member for Mali was a fellow traveller. Uh, and also a, a proponent for nuclear energy. And having listened to the member for Mali explain some concerns in her electorate around renewable energy and the potential for renewable energy in her electorate, I, I do wonder if the member for Mali has consulted with her constituents about how they might feel about a nuclear reactor in the member for Mali's electorate. Just wonder whether she's asked that question, whether the member for Fairfax has thought about. Um, where his uh, dream of nuclear energy might be rolled out across Australia. Because, of course, while the member for Fairfax has been travelling the world uh, posting videos from Hiroshima about um, nuclear energy, our government has been getting on with the work of securing our country's energy supply. Our country has been getting on with doing the work that those opposite failed to do for nearly a decade. We have been investing in the supply our country needs for our future. And we know that there are very real cost of living pressures on Australians at the moment. Inflation is a global problem. The war in Ukraine has disrupted energy and energy supply across the world. Real problems that our government has taken seriously and dealt with seriously as grown up governments do. We have not been flitting around the world filming videos at Hiroshima. We have not been pretending that our country should have a nuclear industry, an industry that everyone tells us all the experts would be more expensive, an industry that, in fact, nuclear modular uh, reactors aren't even commercially viable yet, uh, an industry that to cost and build in our country just makes absolutely no sense. But you know what do, does make sense in our country? Renewables. Renewables. And do you know what people in this country want our government to deliver? Renewables. And again, I note that those opposite have been scoffing at our renewable targets, have been scoffing at the fact that our country is trying to do the our government is trying to do the work to transform our country into a renewable energy superpower, to realise the potential of the future that is there, to make sure that our country benefits from the transformation that is going to happen around the world that we do not get left behind. Those opposite would have us left behind. And you know, I was in my electorate on the weekend and I was having a conversation with someone about what's going on, about cost of living pressures. And do you know what they said to me? They said to me, I'm concerned that we're not going fast enough in terms of making sure that we're getting renewables into our grid. And I do understand that concern. We are coming off a very low base because we had a decade where nothing was done. We had a decade where to say that climate change was a real thing was something you couldn't mention in this place. We had a government that was full of deniers, and it seems they are still full of deniers. Despite the message that the Australian people sent them just over a year ago, they haven't woken up. They still come in here and they still deny that the future of this country is renewable, that renewables will be uh, part of turning this country into a clean energy superpower and that all Australians will benefit from that. Our government's getting on with that work. We are getting on with the work of making sure that we are doing all we can to provide, to provide relief on energy costs. And of course, that's work that we did in this parliament late last year. It's work that, again, I note those opposite voted against. You know, they come in here and they grandstand, but when it came to actually acting, again, when it came to being the adults in the room, when it came to dealing with the crises that our country faces, those people opposite failed to do it. They could not vote to, uh, to provide that relief on energy prices. So, you know, we have matter of public importance after matter of public importance on a similar topic from those opposite. I would just ask them to stop and reflect, to think about their actions, to think about the decade of denial and drift that they left us, the mess that we are trying to clean up, and think about how they could work constructively with us to do this work, 
uh, in the effort and in the best interests of all Australians.